Show him, dude. <clears throat> don't, don't, don't show him. Don't. It's not a green one, dude. It's not a green one, dude. Well, here's the Tundra. Probably should have had an update in between here because there's been a lot of work. So now I'm gonna have to kind of retrace our steps from where we started to where we are now based on the last update episode. So I've kind of done some stuff on my Instagram to keep current, but we've really just been thrashing on getting all the primary to work in the chassis done. Uh, the new name for the Tundra is Vivian. Vivian Ward, duck, duck, go it. Just for a short recap on this thing. Eric's truck came in, first gen Tundra, center mount, front bulkhead. Uh, quite a bit of frame rail, I would say six to seven feet. Then like a two by three rectangular mild steel tube chassis going out to the bump zone and to the fuel area and all that. So like we talked about before, doing a, a extra cab F100 cab swap on this thing was the big ticket. Uh, re making this thing removable was also the intention here. I don't want to bank on this thing not rolling again. If it does, it does. And we should just build to the circumstances of that happening where we can get another cab on and off. Um, so there's a lot of different angles I want to cover here as far as this update and where to start. So I think primarily we kind of talked about like the, the murkiest waters being the structure um, from like the engine cage into the firewall and bulkhead. We retained a lot of, um, you, know, you can see this is frame, but what we did is we cut a lot of it down because it was very tall and plated the top. This, all these are splice tubes in here. So that means there's like an, an interior tube um, on the ID of this tube that matches, I guess the inside tube, that's gonna be just disgusting to explain. Two inch 120 wall one and three quarter, 120 wall. So everywhere you see, these are called rosette holes. Um, they're just, they're landing places to, they're holes in the outer tube to grab the inner sleeve. So all these areas where you see like a, just a root pass and a rosette weld, that's all just a sleeve in there. <clears throat> and that's where we've had to kind of get a win in to extend the chassis where we want it now. Some of this stuff, the trajectory of these tubes, we just have to land where it lands. like. Obviously this engine cage is a lot of big structure and work, uh, especially because it retains the shock mounts, bump stops, like front cross member. It's just, this is a wild situation to try to just replace. And again, we're, we're dabbling very carefully here with why did we not just rebuild the whole vehicle? And that was not the intention. So it's like, if we start cutting into this area, then we're really going backwards. So like I'm saying, these tubes that are kind of spanning out from here, they're in place and we kind of just got to play them where they lie and make an executive decision on like where, how far out that's going to go and how we can build that pertaining to our new part of the cap. So that's one thing, cutting the Toyota Tundra cab off. Ooh, got a little freebie down here. Um, cutting the Toyota cab off of this thing, it's not a huge deal. There was not a lot tied in as far as the cage work going down to the frame. There's kind of like a weird hoop going around, starting in like this point, going around like the trans, but it didn't actually tie in and then it tied into the seat mount. So it was about two and a half days of complete cutting on this thing. Colin just kind of bit the bullet, handled it and got that part done. Then part two turns into this guy. So this was a complete sealed cab back from the 70s. Uh, Lots of rust, lots of just shittiness on it, but the meat and potato that we needed is retained. And what we wanted to do is kind of make an executive decision on where to cut the cab, uh, where it'll be easy to not only mount to, but also to repeat the cuts. 
So it's not where we have to have a diagram. If we wanted to replace the cab when it rolls again, where we need to like, okay, go up two inches in this, and we don't need to do that. Just cut it somewhere simple, and we know we can do that again with the next cab. And then boom, we'll have plates on here that I'll get into later that'll be our mounting surfaces. So we're not actually having to do extensive amount of welding and fabrication to the exterior shell. Excuse me if this is like I'm trying to bring order, but there's a lot of big steps. So we'll also jump back. Lacing, just figuring out appropriate areas to cut this out, um, cut out what was there, remove the Tundra cap, prep the F100 for what we need here, uh, and cut it in, you know, the respective areas where it'll make sense. When I was in high school, they used to have a lot of like mini trucks and street trucks. Part of that program, like, like a real sick way to get that thing low, low is to body drop it. And I'm sure they do it with like a lot of C10s and stuff now. Um, body dropping is essentially, you know, these trucks are a body on frame. So if you body drop it, you're, you're essentially, you're scooching your frame into your body and that's lowering the whole car overall in the exterior. So what I wanted to do with Eric's is the same thing as get rid of that big high frame rail where you see almost all of it, which is it's a six and three quarter, seven inch tall frame rail. Uh, and just bring the cab, since we're not gonna need to worry about the floor so much, we just bring the cab completely level with the bottom of the frame. And especially if you're building a, a frame rail truck, which this still is, I mean, you can say it's center mount and you can say it's got a back half, but it's a frame rail truck. So your packaging, and your handling dynamics uh, are dramatically uh, different than a tube chassis car. And bringing the center of gravity down and then your packaging, you know, if, if this thing is level with the bottom of the frame, your kind of your belly pin, your skid plate options get to be more streamlined uh, and everything just gets lower. So the whole car will sit lower. It'll still have the same functionality as it did before, but it'll sit lower and have that kind of menacing presence. Now, going about that, we had this thing, you can see there's a two inch, just very primitive style set up here where there's a, a two inch block in between this tube that goes across the car. And this two inch block is actually what we had to have to add. We had it all the way low. We had it level with the bottom of the frame. But what was happening is this thing bumps so high in the front that the fenders, when we have the McQueen glass on here, the 40 inch tire would go so high that we'd have to not just cut the side profile of like the side surface of the wheel opening, but we'd have to cut into the top and it would just, we'd be shitting the bed with that. We'd also have to make extensive modifications um, for this whole Chingadera situation up here to go up into the hood. <clears throat> so two inches is where we found like a sweet spot where we're still gonna have to cut shit out of the fender, but it's not gonna be in like into the top surface of the fenders. And that's, that's a weird look because then you really lose the actual arch and the profile and you start to like make something come in right here. And it just, I think you can make anything work, but for what we have here, that just didn't need to happen. This is our happy medium. This thing's probably got a four inch body drop on it right now. Was well, gonna be a six inch, it's a four. Uh, it's very healthy when the glass, like obviously what we talked about too is getting a front tire on there, getting the glass temporary mounted on there, and then figuring out exactly where this body's happy, where we don't have oh, wow, that kind of thing going on. So we're dialed now. That's that's kind of where we set the cab, uh, and and like what dictated all, all the packaging, as far as the you know centering on the frame. I know it's hard to see back here, and it's a little slot here, uh, but there's some big changes we made back here that I'll take you guys through right now. So part of this cage, especially on the upper portion or just part of the chassis is uh, doing something a little different um, from your typical, you know, running running a, like an exit tube out the C pillar and then drawing a bend down and drawing down and landing, you know, whatever into the chassis or, or the frame or something. So what Colin and I kind of opted to do here, and he was the mastermind behind building this thing is 
running, you know, figuring out where our exit locations are going to be for the C-pillar area uh, for, for our down tubes, and then running this upper portion as one complete tube. So it's a, it's a complete stick. I don't know what the overall, you know, length of it was at the end, but, you know, started really long, uh, bent the center portion, and you can see too, uh, with this, it's kind of hard to explain here, but you can see how tightly fit and trim this thing is. Before we get into the A-pillar portions and, and how we're drawing things down, uh, we'll touch still on that, on that crown. Um, we wanted to obviously run the halo all the way across. And then what we really noticed is, is the crown of this thing peaks towards the B-pillar area. <coughs> and then it kind of drops and then it has a harsh down here so there's one bin cracked into here for the center tube and then you can see the the gaps are super consistent i mean i guess you can call that a gap but all these tubes on this upper portion are rolled and they're rolled to fit the cab and i don't know if you can see the radius in them but they're fitting. I mean, especially like that back one, you can see there's a lot of crown in that thing. And this is your typical junction up here. So a lot of this tube too, that's what I wanted to talk about too, is this is all two inch, but there's a lot of it where it's um, 065, 095, and then just the mains are 120. So what you'll see with, with the down tubes that we have right now is you see that there's there's no traditional B pillar tube going straight down. There's a C pillar vertical tube that spans from C pillar and then starts going diagonal into your B pillar location on top of the pivot. Uh, the A pillar has a big radius and you're, you're doing a radius notch into here. Now what's gonna happen is this tube transfers load into that A pillar and then there's also, that's why there's all this extra prep on here uh, there's going to be a big radius gusset here, a two inch radius gusset. And then there'll also be a secondary A pillar going down. So we'll get into that in a second. But what you're going to see here, a strong theme in this thing is going to be a lot of big radius uh, tube gusseting and, and notches like this where it's a, it's a notched bend. So you'll see there's a lot more surface area of welding and strength there uh, that'll essentially be a stronger junction. Before I go back, I'll kind of show you what's going on here. This thing's pretty complex. You can see the pivots. So obviously like your, your upper link pivot is here. It's all part of the same box structure. Uh, and then you can see your lower big overlays. Root pass to the frame, but these things were all welded on the table first. And then you can see where some of our tube structure is starting to lie into this, where we're, we're not just grabbing the tube and we're not just grabbing the the box plate areas, but we're trying to integrate all that together. And you can also see under here, same kind of program. Uh, and then what we're gonna do here, put this down. What we're gonna be doing here is uh, adding plate work as well. So this lies just above the upper link um, with space for the actual heim joint and the rod end to clear there. But we'll end up adding a bunch of plate work into here. So this, this whole big complex area turns into one big structure. So optimal wheelbase for, let's say like a trophy truck spec setup where um, you want the thing to kind of have the same handling characteristics as some kind of a spec truck or a trophy truck is, for me, in my opinion, is like a 90 to 92, three, uh, 124, 126 inch wheelbase. So track width, 90 to 93, um, and then wheelbase, 124 to 126 lot of like 
I guess luxury pre runners or whatever, or like a 135 ish. But if you can get them down, and a lot of them you'll see shortened, is to get closer and closer to that 124, 126. Uh, Eric's truck was 135, and we had the thing, and I kind of, I saw after we set the front, and, and we set that tire into the wheel opening where it needed to be with the fender on. And I was like, all right, now we have the opportunity here to make this thing better than it was and not just put a cab on it. Uh, and then that also, you know, it goes back to, well, why not just do redo the frame and this and that and this and this and this. And I weighed out a lot of options and the path of least resistance, especially with redoing some of the chassis back here, uh, led to this. So what we have here now is 125 inch wheelbase at ride height. Obviously this thing swings in an arch, so it's sucked in a little bit, but you can tell Things are closer now. The bed sides have that proper overlap. That'd probably be somewhere around here. It's probably make cool noise. <laughs> Does nothing for me. Man. We're gonna keep the, the patina for a while too. But anyways, I wanted to touch on this. So we took 10 inches out of the actual frame uh, before the pivots in, in a spot where we could really graft things into it and tie it in and hold it. Uh, full pin welding on that, it's prepped. We have two sections welded, two sections unwelded just to hold it in place. Uh, and we had the opportunity here to make this thing the best it can be with what it already has and just delete some stuff. And uh, once we had the front wheel and tire centered in the wheel opening there where we wanted it and figured out the right drop on the body, it was just bare frame in here and we didn't have any tube lacing yet and just it made sense to just try to get this thing optimal. And it was at 135 inches and now it's at 125. We took 10 inches of frame out of it and got this thing where it's gonna have the best chance of, of oh my God. We had the option to shorten the wheelbase and I took that option and ran with it. And now it's 125 and that's where it should be. And it's not 135 and we're not settling for crumbs just because it had some fucking frame rail under there. So that's what it is. One of the, like the, I guess you could say the elephant in the room was the trailing arms that we had to do. Even though like we got the truck working good, we needed to get the up travel. Eric, if you go back on the channel uh, a ways to where the truck was, the Tundra was orange and black. Eric brought it in, he put different shocks on the rear, but he wanted to get more up travel out of the thing, notch the frame, redo where the bump stops go. Uh, and put new trailing arms on so we didn't have to cut the shock mounts out of the chassis because we didn't want to do all that. And the, the path of least resistance was to build a different trailing arm. Now, with that being said, that trailing arm was ugly. No doubt about it. Uh, it's not that it was designed wrong or it was weak or it didn't work right, but it was ugly. It, hang, it, just, it had a gnarly hang down. It was like a daddy long dick. It just it wasn't a, like a canoe or a pocketed plate arm. It just, there was a lot of characteristics there where we put a Band-Aid on something that needed surgery, not stitches, surgery. With the geometry that was in the frame originally, uh, it just, I don't think it was right for the truck and the setup and, and it's not, everybody's got their own opinion on stuff like that. I've kind of used a tried and tested um, like height and spread on lower link and upper link that you can kind of incorporate as long as you set the height in the right spot on the frame that is really a proven recipe for success for handling dynamics. So uh, what we did is we built all plate boxed pivots that can, you know, they, they were designed originally to go under the frame. So the height and stuff was proper as far as their design. And what it, that also did is like, if you think about, you have your frame rails um, and then you have like your trailing arms and the, more you can get away from your trailing arms being spread out on the axle super wide and you can get them in line with with the car you know get them as far out as possible and in line is is proven to be the best way for handling on these things so these new pivots gave us a chance to not only you know if you think about where the frame was we put these pivots on the outside so then we're getting our spread uh, pretty close to on point you can see that the trailing arms now are almost directly in line and then they've put the shocks in the right spot as well, and they're not hanging down super, you know, droopy balls like they were before. I'm just trying to figure out where to take you guys through this thing, because there was so many steps, not just from the pivots, but where we wanted to identify um, putting all the tubes and the structure to make the most sense. 
Yeah, the one thing with putting like a big pivot box, uh, I guess essentially on the end of your frame rail or where your frame rail ends is, then you, if you have a cab that, you know, your pivot box is here and your cab's going further back uh, towards the rear of the car, then you're gonna have to float like a C pillar area or some structure back there if there's occupants or something where, you know, structure matter. So what I wanna do with you guys is just, we kind of covered so far, another recap is um, demo, Tundra off, establish cab, establish positioning of frame in cab and wheelbase, chop wheelbase, add pivot boxes, incorporate new trailing arms, and now we'll start talking about the structure. So first things first, as far as the tube work goes and the lacing, this thing already had a trans mount in there, but it was mounted under the frame. And again, we're trying to streamline a lot of the uh, structure under the frame. So when we do put skids on here, it's not appendages hanging off, you know, like uh, like warts or blisters under there um, that can also cause friction if you're sliding on stuff. So deleting the trans mount was one of the first orders of business. We did retain the original engine mounts, which are just your standardized like four bolt block mounts on the side. Um, this is not a mid plate vehicle or a front plate vehicle or anything like that. So just kind of retaining some of the original stuff there <coughs> with the trans mount. Uh, we just simplified it. Uh, you know, it's, it's now it's part of the structure and just the middle portion drops out via tube connectors. Uh, you can see you just undo these guys. Tube connectors are our friend here. Um, undo these guys and this guy will come out. This, this whole packaging portion is kind of the core of the vehicle and we'll get into that in a second again coming back to the tubes on the like the engine cage and the front cross member area there was kind of some some of this had to be dictated just based off of what we can get away with um, we had some tubes coming off that were primarily straight this stuff's all root pass so don't focus too hard there's kind of some silicone bronze tacks and stuff here that'll all go away uh, you know bringing this stuff out and realizing where we can get away with starting this tube. We wanted to definitely have like a mitered section and to tag into this whole section as a bulkhead. So instead of doing your traditional, you know, making a pontoon or something and then landing this, this A pillar thing, but really wanted to build some structure up here and then land into that at the belt line, which is essentially like your window line. Um, that being said, Drew these guys out, these guys out, mitered section with partition, which is a uh, like a, a structural steel style wall in there where you can you can really put heat in and get a complete weld and it also doubles as like a, a structure in between there. So it's not just a tube that's butt welded. So you have a partition here, partition here, same on the other side. When we built this, we wanted to, again, just try to try to land where it made sense, where it didn't look like we had to pop weird bins or anything into the front structure. So uh, there's about an inch of space in between the outside of the joint to the inside of the cab. And that's just paying respect to being able to get this thing on and off. We've kind of tried to honor the, the system of one inch on all the tight areas. And that's going to give us enough room to come off and land pickups for mounting the body to the chassis. And it also just makes it easier when you're putting the thing on and off. If one of these things isn't as square as the other one, I mean, they were made in the seventies, so I don't know how tight their manufacturing tolerances were. This portion here, obviously this gives us way more than what was already there. Uh, the windshield tube that was here was even further forward and the engine comes out and via, you know, clearly this thing, this big cross member comes out in two different pieces. It kind of comes out through the front, but now we have a, an area that's much larger where it's going to lend to getting this thing in and out easier than before. One of the things I think is really important is being able to get chassis structural rigidity into the lower portion. 
uh, not just like building a badass like a roof section, um, you know, or side portions or door bar areas, but really getting rigidity in like just the lower plane of the chassis and tying that all in in the right way. The frame is not really your friend. I mean, it's just, it's whatever kind of shit steel they're using. It's probably just recycled mild steel. Um, building a chassis, you know, where the frame is kind of integrated into it, but you're not just relying on the frame is the name of the game for me, especially with Eric's car or anything we do here. It, it's, it's not so much just doing like a cage where you go, boom, psh, I'm gonna land a tube here, psh, and we'll land all the other tubes psh, into that one, and that's gonna go into the frame, and you're gonna rely on the frame. That thing is garbage. It's there, it's, it did its, you know, it served its purposes on a pickup truck, and that's that. So really now we have like a chromoly pivot box, which is kind of like a, a mothership here. And then, uh, it's gonna fall no matter what. We have these, these pivots here. You can see there's a large notch. Uh, but what I wanted to get at is like tying in all of our front structure. So like the end of that bulkhead, uh, you know, drawing in above the trans where we can still get the trans in and out, favoring footwell area, drawing back out, drawing this chassis portion out, then we'll tie that in. And then these tubes drawing back into this little core here. And this core is so important because not only is that your, your B pillar section, but that's also all your pivots where all your loads going. And that's where all the rest of the rear of the chassis is starting. So it's really important to kind of find these core areas uh, and, and tie them in how you need to, where it makes sense. And that's the same with this, like this core here is a great tie in of just rigidity in every point. So it's just like thinking if you had like a thin piece of wood, you know, or even like, like balsa wood is really flexible and versatile. And you think about if you had something that's quarter inch thick, and it was just a rectangle and you started twisting it. You know, which, which ways would that thing twist? And it does one thing to add all this up here, but how can you make just that lower portion of the bolsa wood not twist and have this rigidity? And it's really about tying in these points and sharing all the load and the impact as much as you can where it's not just centered on an area, especially on the frame that's just gonna move around. Got this section finished, so it, part of this was figuring out where we can start cutting more of this. Cause a lot of what we did on Eric's car is we left some of like before, before we, uh, we added these pivots before we had our frame gone. So like this part that's just root welded on here, this thing had like frame going over this landing area. And we just figured out how we could build some of this portion to tie in without having to take that frame out so it could still hold the square and the rigidity without us having to do tons of work to get it like that and float it. So once we got that, that let's call that front, the front core section done uh, with the tie-ins like going above the trans, um, obviously the section's going to like the lower portion of the engine cage there, making sure the headers go in and out of there. Um, that, that was our initial. And like I said, there used to be like big gnarly rectangular box frame rail almost where this tube was going into this, this existing portion of the chassis. We wanted to use that almost as a fixture to build into and then, you know, build enough on top and in the middle section to just cut that part out and then lace it back up. So that being said, we constructed enough structure again, a pillar went up, ran these tubes, built this whole portion, which we'll come back and talk about too, all the down tube section. Um, there's, there's two different planes on the down tubes coming out, which I'm really into, and then ran the splice, figured out where our B pillar was gonna land into our pivot, because the pivot is really what's gonna be the mothership on each side now, like I talked about, of, of strength and kind of our powerhouse of structure there. Uh, once we had these portions, then we can go delete, 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 <coughs> COVID. Um, there's also some tax on the bump stops here where we had um, more like just mock-up structure because we still didn't want to rely on the tube that was there. So this was also in. And then once we cut that out, the, the existing uh, like rectangular tube in there, then we added this. And obviously this thing is bumped exactly where it needs to be. It's got shortened upper links now because of the new geometry, that's what it required. And it's built, you know, less than a finger 
above that thing. Uh, it's never going to change. That's how it's going to be. So it's safe to start building like your, your lower floor wall on that portion. Shocks, you can see the shocks are in there just for mock-up to make sure we're in the right spot with things. It's put them in a pretty good spot. So shock mounts should be relatively easy. Uh, but this gives us, you know, you never want to just shoot the moon without having the information that you need. So these guys are just hanging out in here. Right now we've kind of established everything on this lower plane. We've established all the roof section, which is very traditional. It's kind of the easy part, but it's really satisfying to look at. Uh, as far as where the A pillar, we're gonna be running a secondary A pillar. So just like it sounds, we're not just gonna have one traditional A pillar, but another secondary uh, with a nice tie-in piece, a special tie-in piece. We do have these runners coming out here. Uh, again, this whole thing's built to be a slip body in a sense. So this whole section with also no, another mitered partition area here um, and landing down, you know, one of the other things too to stress with a lot of design is when a cage is being constructed, not having these, you know, the support tubes where the, the most impact is gonna be pushing down on this thing. So you really wanna be able to disperse that in an angle and not like a tube just going straight across. It's just a crucial thing. So it's not just gonna rip down because it'll just bend. Uh, so establishing this, this kind of pedestal here is where we're gonna land the big junction. Uh, and then we'll talk about the back really quick and close this thing out. Again, like tying into the chassis that's already here. Uh, obviously you can see all the fresh tube work. You can see what was there. There's a, a splice and a sleeve in here. Um, this diagonal was already here. So if you start to digest this, the bump zone is seeing the most impact period. Obviously the bypass and the coilover are taking some of that, but at the end of the day, that bump is your end point for compression on the chassis and for impact. With that being said, this is a really integral part of the chassis to tie into. So you get a good tie in of, you know, your whole chassis tie in. The down tubes are important and it's not just about run them somewhere to look cool, but run them where they make sense. And having this is like a multi-plane down tube structure, this, uh, you know, primary down tube, there's a partition in here, same thing, miter partition, we're, we're very strong with those around here. Um, this portion goes right into your bump zone. Then it ties into the X, which is a different plane that ties into the rear portion of the chassis. So you're really, with that X, you're getting a lot of the twist out of the way, um, structurally, and then you're getting a lot of the heavy impact and um, compression out of the way with these tubes. So it's really about tying in two different planes without having to have like your traditional like down tube here with an X. You're getting both of those things plus more because you're tying into different parts of the chassis. So I'm really into this. What this also does is it adds for really good um, packaging where I can get in here and get to anything. We're gonna optimize all of this for tool bags and storage, but that's gonna be for our next update. What we wanted to get done with this episode is just get you guys caught up on the progress. There's been a lot and I feel like I should have even had one in between at least for the channel because there's a lot to like backtrack on all of the steps and why we did things the way we did. Uh, the next episode I'm going to run through with tape and I'm going to run through with my hands and um, kind of go through the next phase of what you can count on seeing. So thank you guys. Uh, thanks for your continued support. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if there's anything you wanna see in detail, remember just leave a comment and we'll get to it. Thank you.